In this video, we're going to explain what happens at a neuromuscular junction. So this is really similar to what we've learned about a cholinergic synapse. But here we've got a synapse between a motor neuron and a muscle fiber instead of between two neurons. So let's go from the beginning and we'll try and explain it kind of as far as we can. So in the motor neuron, an action potential is going to arrive in what we call the presynaptic bulb. Um, so it's basically the end or the, the presynaptic terminal. It's the end of the motor neuron. So when that action potential arrives, it causes these voltage gated calcium ion channels to open. So when the calcium ion channels open, obviously calcium ions are going to diffuse in to the presynaptic bulb. When those calcium ions diffuse in, it causes these vesicles, which are carrying the neurotransmitter, acetylcholine, those vesicles will move towards and fuse with what we call the presynaptic membrane. As they fuse with the presynaptic membrane, they're going to release the neurotransmitter or the acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. And the acetylcholine, which you can see here, is going to diffuse across the synaptic cleft. Now, so far, that's exactly the same as the story we learn for a cholinergic synapse. Exactly the same. But this is where it becomes a little different because on the other side of that synaptic cleft is not another neuron. This is a muscle fibre, OK, the effector, if you like. So this is a muscle fibre. So you could describe this as the postsynaptic neuron. That would be fine. But you should also know that it's actually called the sarcolemma. Because this is a muscle fibre. This is the cell surface membrane of the muscle fibre, which is called the sarcolemma. So the acetylcholine diffuses across the cleft. It's going to bind to the acetylcholine receptors, which are on sodium ion channels. So when the acetylcholine binds, the sodium ion channels open and sodium ions will diffuse into the muscle fibre. Remember, it's a muscle fibre, not another neuron. When those sodium ions diffuse in, obviously, if enough sodium ions diffuse in, then what we say is we've depolarised the sarcolemma. We've depolarized the muscle fiber cell membrane. Now, that can generate an action potential. And the action potential is going to travel down these T tubules or transverse tubules. Let's just pause there for a second and check that we're okay so far because we've already built this story up quite a lot and it's a lot to learn. But as I said, the first part is the same as your cholinergic synapse learning. So the action potential arrives in the presynaptic bulb. This causes calcium ion channels to open. Calcium ions diffuse into the presynaptic bulb. This causes the vesicles containing acetylcholine to move towards and fuse with the presynaptic membrane. They release the acetylcholine, you can say by exocytosis. The acetylcholine diffuses across the synaptic cleft, binds to the acetylcholine receptors, which causes the sodium ion channels to open. Sodium ions diffuse in to the muscle fibre. It depolarizes the sarcolemma and generates an action potential. The action potential is transmitted down the transverse tubules. That's where we are so far. I'm going to extend it slightly just so we can link it to the next topic, which is your sliding filament theory. So once the action potential travels down the transverse tubules, it's going to be carried to the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And when the action potential reaches the sarcoplasmic reticulum, it will cause calcium ions to be released into the sarcoplasm, which is kind of like the cytoplasm of the muscle fiber. Now, the sarcoplasm surrounds the myofibrils. And this is where our topics start to link together, because the calcium ions that are released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, they will move into the sarcoplasm, where they'll be able to bind to the troponin. They bind to the troponin, 
which causes it to change shape and that moves the tropomyosin aside and exposes the binding sites on the actin for the myosin heads. And that's when we get the formation of an actin-myosin crossbridge. Now that is linking into sliding filament theory, which we're not doing in this video, but you should appreciate how all of this eventually leads to the release of those calcium ions in the muscle fiber. And those calcium ions are what will move the tropomyosin aside to expose those binding sites. Hopefully you found this useful. Make sure you check out my other videos on YouTube to help with your revision and also my page over on TikTok where we're posting revision questions every single day, twice a day in the run up to your A-level exams.